Hi, welcome everyone to this tutorial on training very large models. My name is Johan Stojka and I'm a faculty at UC Berkeley. In the past, I work on several popular open source systems, including Apache Spark and Ray. In this talk, I will be making two points. First, training large models in parallel is fast becoming the norm. Second, parallel training is an extremely complex problem. Then, in the rest of these tutorials, we will introduce several state-of-the-art techniques and tools to train these models in parallel. For the longest time, the computing industry rode two important trends, the Moore's law and the closely related NR scaling law. The Moore's law formulated by Gordon Morse back in 1965 states that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles every two years. The Denard scaling law published by Robert Denard in 1974 states that the increase in transistor density doesn't come at the cost of the power consumption. In particular, while every two years the number of transistor doubles, the power remains constant. There are two important corollaries to this loss. First, the memory capacity doubles every two years without increasing power consumption. Second, the CPU core performance doubles every 18 months. This is because in addition to doubling the number of transistors, the latency between transistors decreases as the transistors are packed closely, closer together. This provides an additional boost in performance, hence the performance doubling every 18 months instead of every two years. Unfortunately, the Morse law has come to an end. The green area here shows the golden age of the Morse law, when the processor performance indeed was doubling every 18 months. Unfortunately, at the beginning of this millennium, the performance increase started to slow down. Today, per core performance improved just a few percent every 18 months. In the meanwhile, the compute demands of machine learning have exploded. Here is a plot showing the compute demands required to train machine learning models over the past 12 years from a study published earlier this year. According to this study, the compute demands to train the machine learning models has doubled every 5.7 months over the past 12 years. This is equivalent to the compute demands growing about 10 times every 18 months. So why is this? Well, one reason is that larger models have been shown to achieve much better accuracy. This is a plot from the GPT-3 paper published in 2020, which shows that the accuracy increases significantly as the model size increases for a variety of training and fine tuning tasks, including zero shot, one shot, and a few shot learning. Another reason is the emergence of foundation models that have been shown to effectively enable training multiple tasks, as well as improving the accuracy for different tasks. This is a great animation illustrating these points we borrow from Google's recent blog post on the pathways language model. To put things together, here I'm overlaying the Moore's law performance increase, as well as the real per core performance increase on the previous plot. The gap between the compute demand of training the state-of-the-art models and the performance of a single core is huge and is growing rapidly. In fact, Note that even if the Moore's law weren't ending, it would have been of little help to bridge this gap. But what about specialized hardware, you might ask? Indeed, over the past decade, a plethora of new hardware accelerators have been released. Well, it turns out that while specialized hardware helps, it is still not enough. 
Here I am overlaying the performance for both NVIDIA GPUs and Google CPUs on the previous plot. Note that despite the more slow slowing down, these processors are still able to provide a two times performance improvement every 18 months. They do so by aggressively specializing their hardware architectures for machine learning workloads. However, despite the impressive increase in the performance of these specialized processors, they are still falling way short of satisfying the compute demands of training state-of-the-art machine learning models. In fact, this gap continues to double every 18 months. Furthermore, note that even if the machine learning models were to stop increasing in size, it will take decades for specialized processors to catch up. For example, consider a recently released PAL model from Google. This is not the largest model, but it still requires 6,000 of the latest CPUs to train. Assuming the performance of these processors continue to double every 18 months, it will take almost 19 years to be able to train the same model in roughly the same time on a single processor. And this is not only true for the compute demands, it will also true for memory demands. Here is a number of parameters for several popular models over the last couple of years. According to this data, the size of the models has increased even faster than their compute demands. That is 35 times every two years since 2016. Unfortunately, over the same time period, the GPU memory has increased only about two times every two years. Again, this is far from enough. Just five years ago, the largest model was fitting on a single GPU. Fast forward today, and the largest model requires hundreds of GPUs just to fit all its parameters. And unlike compute, we cannot do much about memory. But while for compute, we can develop better architecture to target narrower workloads to improve their performance. Specialization doesn't help much in the case of memory, as we still need at least one transistor to store a single bit. This means that to support these machine learning workloads, there is no other way than paralyzing, than paralyze these workloads. Given these trends, it should come as no surprise that several distributed systems have been developed to speed up training. The most popular systems have employed data parallel training. At the high level, these solutions train models on different batches of data in parallel and then average their ways periodically. However, these solutions assume that the model fits on a single GPU. But what happens if we cannot fit the model on a single GPU? Well, in this case, we have no choice but to paralyze these models. But how can you paralyze these models? To answer this question, consider the forward path of training a neural network. The most expensive operation to compute the outputs of each layer is a tensor operation that multiplies the input vector with the weight matrix, as shown in this slide. So one way to parallelize these models is then to partition the model by layers or stages. This means that each matrix multiplication operation is still executed on a single GPU. We call this interoperator parallelism as different tensor operators can run on different GPUs. The complexity of interoperator parallelism is compounded by the need to pipeline the execution on both the forward and backward path, and the fact that GPUs can be on the same or different machines, which provide very different communication characteristics. Another way to partition the model is to partition a layer or a stage, which leads 
to the partition of the matrix multiplication operation. We call this intraoperator parallelism, as the same operator might now execute across multiple GPUs. To summarize, optimizing training for very large models that do not fit on a single GPU is extremely challenging. First, the search space is huge. It includes data parallelism, model parallelism, which in turn includes interoperator and intraoperator intra parallelism. Second, there is a growing diversity of specialized processors, such as GPUs and TPUs. These processors have different characteristics, which affect training performance. Finally, there is a huge and growing diversity of neural network architectures. We need to train at scale. Not surprisingly, these challenges have led to a plethora of systems for training very large models, which have been developed over the past several years. Again, at the high level, these systems need to decide how to decompose a model, to which device to assign each component of the model, how to route the data between components, and when to schedule the execution of each component. These systems can be categorized into two groups. In the first group, there are systems that are specialized for transformer-based architectures. These systems might require hand tuning and include NVIDIA's Megatron ML and Google G Shark with mixtures of experts. In the second category, we have systems that support a larger variety of network architectures but employ only a subset of parallelization methods. In doing so, the systems effectively trace the quality of optimization for the time it takes to compute this optimization. Examples of such systems are Microsoft BSpeed, a deep learning optimization library for distributed training, Google GP SMD, which is a general and scalable parallelization compiler for common machine learning workloads, and Meta's, fa Meta's fair scale, fully sharded data parallel system. In addition, in this tutorial, you'll also learn about ALPA, the first fully automatic optimizer for training large model that can match the performance of existing hand-tuned solutions. Is the system that we have developed at Berkeley over the past two years. Thank you, and I hope you'll all enjoy the rest of this tutorial.